Previously on Gorilla 6 4. Oh, Sonic! Ah! Like. Ah! Robots! It's very spooky, very mysterious. Alright, issue three. Sonic runs up to find Knuckles, who is in this issue, and again, immediately, they are rivals. I buy that. Like, they have a great amount of respect for each other, but they will still, like, poke and prod at each other, and they'll try to outdo each other. And uh, Knuckles actually has already outdone Sonic, because he's destroyed all the badniks outside town already. But unfortunately for them, two mercenary characters that approached during the war saved the town, and then they said, Hey, yeah, we'll protect you! But then it was kind of just like like in Mega Mind, where it's just like, you know, it's more like under new management. Sonic and Knuckles then go into the town anyway, because they can. I don't really know how anyone can Knuckles proof anything. Maybe it's kind of like in Minecraft when you put like a, a ridge around your house, that way the spiders can't climb up to the top. All you gotta do is that and the Knuckles can't do shit. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sonic and Knuckles then infiltrate uh, these new characters' hideouts. I'm, I'm struggling to find a word here to describe them because villains is way too severe of a term. Like, I don't know if they really deserve that. <laughs> I'd say more like goons, I guess. And once inside, they find some wisp capsules stored away in like the little area they found. And uh, we actually get some weird backstory on wisps here, which is not something I expected. So apparently the wisps wanted to help the resistance in their fight against Dr. Eggman because obviously they don't like Eggman from before and they like all of the animal people because they're cool. They willingly volunteered to be put in capsules and left on battlefields for the resistance members to find when they're out in battle. Which is a very interesting thing to try and explain away, you know, as being a video game mechanic. Now explain rings. So immediately, this kind of paints these two characters we're about to meet as really disgusting people for taking living creatures and just throwing them in a closet and then using them when they need to. So it's like, uh, now I want to see these guys, like, punched in the face, preferably. And, uh, thankfully, we do get that, because the first thing these two guys do is rhyme at Sonic and Knuckles, and Sonic's reaction is pretty much my reaction every time. I absolutely love these two characters, Rough and Tumble. They are just basically, they're like in a less competent Team Rocket, except they can hit you in the face. Like, I don't think Jesse or James would ever punch you. Meowth definitely actually has punched someone. So these two obviously stand no chance against Sonic and Knuckles, and they mop the floor with them, but as they're being mopped, they go grab some Wisp capsules, and then Sonic does one of his huge, like, sappy speech things, where he talks yet more Wisp backstory, like how apparently when Sonic saved all the Wisp planets, some of them decided to live on Sonic's world. Which again, makes sense why they were with him in Lost World and in Forces, and again in Team Sonic Racing, but that hadn't happened yet. Though it's weird to me that the Wisps would want to willingly be power-ups like that. But it's fine, we can get there when we get there. So with that, all the Wisps believe in themselves again, they all leave the Wisp Bonds that Rough and Tumble are trying to use, and then there's no contest, Sonic and Knuckles put Rough and Tumble in the jail. And we'll never see them again, never. Trust me, they'll never come back. Also, I was kind of hoping they wouldn't be around for a while because I wanted to try and forget the fact that they are skunks and they're still like fully sapient creatures, yet they still sometimes use their skunk powers, let's say. I just don't know how to feel about that. I just, it's a little weird to me. So Sonic and Knuckles celebrate. There's a lot less stuff at the end where Sonic is like, oh, you should come with me because he doesn't say that. I think he just kind of likes to hang out with Knuckles occasionally. Uh, and they're partying, everyone's happy. But uh-oh, Man in Chair is once again watching, and you know what he learns this time? He learns that Knuckles is not on Angel Island. So that means the Master Emerald is up for grabs. And uh, I'm liking that that's a plot point again. I, I really, really like that. Just bringing the lore in full effect. And you haven't seen anything on that front yet. Oh my god, it gets so good. To speed a bit more through issue 4, because it's really a lot of the same, it just helps set up some more characters and some plot threads. So basically, Sonic arrives at the next town, and he actually starts thinking that he probably should have had the resistance with him, because this place is in really bad shape. And he's not sure if he can actually take it all on his own, which is interesting character thoughts for that character specifically, because he's very cocky. 
He decides that, you know, there's no use thinking about it, so he goes into action, and he actually hears someone destroying robots nearby, and that turns out to be new IDW character, Tangle the Lemur. And she's pretty important, because she's actually, I think, the character they were using to, like, market and reveal this new set of comics. Like, she was the big character that was with Sonic in the announcement. So it's really cool to finally meet her. And what she is, to me, kind of feels like, and this is not in a bad way, she sort of feels in this issue, like, all of, like, the, uh, really, like, rowdy and antsy and adventurous parts of Sonic's personality without all of the ego. Like I said, it's not a bad thing, and she does definitely change a bit as the comics go on, and I really, really like what they've done with her. Like, she is, she is basically, like, a hero wannabe, and then she does it. Like, that, I respect that. But this is a new person to Sonic, and they get acquainted really quickly, and they're fighting, and they're doing all this combo stuff, and again, like I said before, that really, to me, feels like a thing that you would do with someone you know really well, and I don't know if they were just trying to establish that she's kind of like a kindred spirit, like she is definitely like an extension of Sonic almost, and like, they have the same passions or whatever, but like, they fight really well together, and it's some cool action. I just feel like it might have been cooler if, like, maybe they were fighting and they kind of messed up a little bit because they don't know each other very well, or... I mean, I know you only have so many pages in a comic, but to me it kind of feels weird that, like, that was one of the things that was making sense of, like, their, like, prior relationships to me, and now it's just like, okay, maybe Sonic can just fight well with anyone. I don't know if it retroactively, like, changes my mind on any of that stuff from before. Soon they both get overwhelmed, and, uh, thankfully, Blaze the Deus Ex Machina shows up, and... She's like, hey, the Soul Emeralds told me there was trouble, so I should probably come help. And Sonic was like, yeah, I've been in prison for seven months. And Eggman took over the world, but it's all good now, don't worry about it. And, uh, in, uh, in fashion that I would only kind of equate to how I would be thinking, Tangle immediately goes for the worst case scenario, and she's like, well, does that mean that, like, maybe something worse than the war is gonna happen? And now nobody's really happy at this point. But they clean up shop, they take down a bunch more badniks, Tangle shoots Sonic into the air with Blaze, and then Blaze throws Sonic into a giant airship, and Goblin Sonic is just like, this homicidal like look on his face, destroys the entire airship, and he knows this is like a important, like this is a hero duty and people are in danger, but he is like ecstatic to be doing this. Like, he, he really feels like a Goku type character in this situation, except I like him more. Sorry, Goku, you kind of lost me along the way. And of course, that means there might be a Vegeta somewhere, and I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. We'll talk about that another time. But Blaze agrees to help Tangle fix up the rest of the town, because I guess she can do something about the fires. She can just control them down. I don't know if we ever saw her, like, get rid of fire as opposed to just create it, but I'm willing to believe that's in her set of powers because she's really cool. And then Sonic is off yet again, because he never stops moving, except for that one moment where he takes a quick breather, just... Okay, we're good. Let's go. That's just, that's his character. I don't know. I mean, it's endearing. And as with the last three issues, somewhere else in the world, there is a figure watching an interesting scene happen. There is a kid with a broken wagon. And as it pans back into the house, we see Dr. Eggman. And he vows he is not only going to fix that wagon, he is going to fix everything. And that is where issue four ends. On a very big cliffhanger, we finally have the reveal of Dr. Eggman. And uh, has he been the one in the chair the whole time? I don't know, it's dark, just like in the house he's in currently, like maybe. We'll get to that later. But I don't think it's any surprise that I'm very passionate about this. Like, I, I feel kind of more alive than I have making the other videos. Cause like, they're all a little bit samey, you know? It's like talking about the Sonic games, and it's like, oh, well this one's bad. Who saw that coming? You try to spice it up as much as you can, but like with this, this is like what I went to school for, like writing. Like I love this stuff. Like when I have more of this for my favorite characters, it is so enticing to me. Like I really wish all of my favorite series would have something like this. Some of you might know there was actually a Mario comic series that I think was pitched to Archie? Maybe IDW in the past? Or, or it was pitched to Nintendo from one of them rather? And it looked incredible and it could have done what these comics do for Sonic except for Mario and I would say, debatably, Mario needs it more, because there are a lot more characters that lack that development. Like, Mario gets some stuff now, Luigi is decently defined thanks to the Mansion games, Bowser is incredible because of all the RPGs, so they don't, I mean, they don't desperately need it, but it would be more fun stuff. Sonic doesn't have a whole lot of extra stuff like that. So it's very good to see that these first four issues not only sold me on this new universe and made me want to see more, 
but it just kind of made me feel good as a fan. Like, it was finally like, I'm enjoying something Sonic related after I was just disappointed for, you know, like, seven or eight years. So, so far, are the comics worth buying? One out of one through four? Yes, absolutely. And there's like 30 of them right now. So if you want to go pick up all of these, you can get them on certain digital apps like Comixology, which I will put the name on, on screen just so people know how to spell it. And of course you can get them physically, which I do have actually a handful of them that are in a drawer somewhere. So if you like this little summary video of these issues, uh, one thing I recommend you go actually buy these things and support the comics because they're incredible. And this is not a replacement for reading them. I did not give you every little snippet of what happens or everything you would experience if you were reading the book. Uh, and also, if you want to see me talk about more of these things, because I would really like to, please let me know down below and I will make sure to get on that, because uh, I especially want to talk about the Metal Virus Saga, which is something that is about two, like, arcs away, so gotta get through some other stuff first. I hope you guys enjoyed this, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. It is now the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for making it here, and if you did make it here, please let me know. And again, if you would like to see more videos about the comics, because I would like to make them. And that's not all I'd like to do. I'd also like to say, if you like this video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord to keep up with more Sonic and other things that aren't Sonic, because I do a lot of things. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current supporters, who are Kaido the Samurai, Danny Lee Dauber, Mike TGC, Chaotic Mercenary, Raiden Still Plays, Crystal, PM13, Crazy Sean DX, Chaos, Ty Little Tech Guy, Zealous Indolent, J Remy, Lucas the Tall Man, and Mega Traffic Cone. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, and I also would like to thank all the people in the $1 tier for doing the same. Remember, even $1 helps, and it gets you access to the uh, blooper episodes and stuff like that, stuff in the Discord. But if you want to hear more about that, please click the join button below, or check out the Patreon link, or just come ask me in the Discord. Feel free. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.